Hello guys, welcome to Alert Brains YouTube channel, The Fiction Session. I'm Masi Motava, a literature student, and I'm excited, so excited, to start this journey of reviewing fiction and giving ideas about novels and plays, recommending on whether I love them or not, and giving reasons why I love or I don't love the book. So welcome, let's begin this journey together. <laughs> So the first book that we're going to review is Nairobi Hit by Mukoma Wagogi and he is the son of a popular author or writer Gogi Wathiongo. I'm so sure we all know about him and in the future we're going to review some of his books. So Mukoma Wagugi begins by introducing a young blonde girl who is killed and placed at the doorstep of one of African lecturers in America. So the first question we as readers are likely to ask is why the girl was killed, who killed that girl and how is she related to the killer. So maybe most of us will say maybe she's a university student or maybe she was related to that lecturer or give so many ideas about why why the main suspect, how the main suspect is related to that girl. But this book helps us to know the name of that girl and how she's related to that suspect. And you will realize that she's not even a student and they have never, never come across each other. So the main characters in this book are Ishmael Fofona, who is a, a black American detective, and the other is David Odhiambo, who will be referred to as O throughout this book. So basically, I'll state the main incidences that happen in this book, and at the end, I'll tell you guys whether I like this book or if I can recommend this book to you. So the first incident is that... Um, Ishmael Fofona received a call after he had seen the body of that girl. He received a call from an unknown caller who told him that if he has, he's really trying to find the answers of who killed the girl, he has to come to Kenya. So the killer is in Kenya. So after coming to Kenya, that's when the real story begins. So the first incident is going to Madare. In Madare, they are going to find out if they are victims of the Rwandese genocide. Who can identify our main suspect here, who is Joshua Akizamana. Unfortunately, they do not get any person who knows Joshua, but they find, they find out one case a rape case where a young girl, a school girl is about to be raped. But Ishmael saves the girl, takes her to hospital together with Ho, and later realizes that she's a victim of the Rwandese genocide, but she does not know Joshua Akizamana. So the other incidents is how Joshua and um, not Joshua, but Ishmael came to know Madi. So Madi is also a victim of the Rwandese genocide and she helps Joshua know the real, the ideal identity of the girl. So Madi, apart from being a victim, she sings in bars to get money and she's beautiful and she has long dreadlocks. That's how she's described in the book. So number one, she helps Ishmael Fofona knows a little bit of Swahili. So he she helps him know how to greet people in Swahili and how to begin small conversations in Swahili. She also helped Ishmael know the main participants in this case. That is the Never Again Foundation and a refugee center. So in most cases we expect that um, refugee centers or institutions meant to help the poor will be receiving financial help from the government or from politicians or from other wealthy organizations. However, 
that is not the case here. Instead, the foundations are giving money or financial support to huge businesses like the Kokomat women. And although they are victims of the genocide, they have a huge supermarket, which is called Kokomat Supermarket, and they are receiving financial support from that um, from that Never Again Foundation. So Madi is the one who helps Josh, who helps Ishmael Fofona to reveal this information. And um, there are a few people who are connected to that organization. And the main reason why their secrets are revealed is because each person wants to be the leader. For example, there is someone, there is Jamal, and there is Joshua, and there is another one referred to as Chalk Bank. So the four of them each wants to be a leader in either of those organizations. So when they are asked, they point fingers to against to each other. Like when Jamal is asked, he points fingers to Joshua and the others because he wants to be the leader. So now accusing each other and being greed for money and jealousy puts them in a position where they cannot hide their secrets anymore. And that helps Ishmael Fofona to know the real identity of those organizations. So after revealing that information and after getting um, some information where most politicians are, are stated that they have received money from the Never Again Foundation, now the life of Ishmael is in danger because he has revealed the the secrets of big people, you know. He has revealed the secrets of, of politicians and now they seek to kill him. So he has to go back to to America. So while he's going back, he is attacked and they have to find another route to escape. That is him, Joshua and Madi. And something I didn't mention is that they already fell in love with Madi. And even after going back and reporting the case, Ishmael Fofona will come back to Kenya to, to marry or to stay with Madi. So they have to find a route where they can escape, and that is through the Ugandan border. So they travel to escape through the Ugandan border. And on their way, they find a place where there is a wedding. I can't remember the exact name, but there is a place where they realize that there is a wedding ceremony. So they pass by that place to get shelter and to rest. So while there is they are in that place, there is a huge hall where the people in that community are believed to be worshiping in. And in that hall, there are pictures. And guess what? The pictures are for, of a family that involves a, the girl who was killed, the girl whom we are trying to find who is the killer and why she was killed. So Ishmael realizes that the girl and her parents were missionaries who came to Kenya to save victims of the Rwandese genocide, but they were killed. Fortunately, that girl did not die. And now, she was going back to America to seek justice for her family. That's where she met her death. So after realizing that, now Ishmael has all the answers and she knows that Joshua is, Joshua is the killer because Joshua is the leader and is the one who is believed to, be, to have been saving those people. So when he takes that information to court, they, they tell him that that information does not have enough witnesses and so Joshua is free. However, Ishmael is not satisfied and he seeks ways to kill Joshua by himself in order to provide justice for that girl. So Joshua plans to come back to Kenya. And when he's planning that, Ishmael knows. And he, he knows when Joshua orders a cab from a particular company. So he convinces his friend to go and pick Joshua to take him to the to the airport using a yellow cab because that's exactly what Joshua was waiting for. And on the other hand, Ishmael cancels 
that trip with the company from where Joshua had ordered. And he goes using um, a car that detectives use when they are undercover to go to Joshua's place. So he can see from far when his friends are, arrives to pick Joshua. And before Joshua can board that cab and they begin their journey, Ishmael shoots him and kills the friend too because he does not want any witnesses against him. And then after that, he plans to come back to Kenya, not for hiding because no one knew that he was the killer apart from the chief detective. He decides to come back to Kenya, to settle in Kenya, and because he had also realized or he had also found love with Madi. So basically, I love this book. I really, really love it. First, it's so short. You can read it within one or two days. And another thing is it brings the real, the ideal picture of Kenya. For example, the author decides to use a character who has never been into Kenya. So we expect that this character, that is Ishmael, will not give biased ideas about Kenya. For example, he notes how the Kenyan roads are so poor. He also notes that Kenyans do not tie seat belts and we all know if that's true or not true. He also notes the the picture of Kibera slums and the order coming from all directions. So he does not give exaggerated ideas about Kenya. So yes, if you would really want to read this book, please find a copy and read it. You'll find so many people who have died in this story. And you'll also realize how many times Ishmael was supposed to die, but he did not die because basically he's the main character and he is the only one who can help us reveal the mystery of the death of that young blonde girl. So in that case, this book lies in the mystery genre because of those many killings and uh, the information that is sought to be revealed at the end of this book. So that's the end. I hope you like this video. Please give it a like or a thumbs up. Subscribe, share this content and suggest what you think about this book. And uh, what other book do you want me to review? Or what other book do you want me to talk about? Thank you for watching. Goodbye.